One of the things with Emacs and my distribution of Emacs that I use, Doom Emacs, is there's so many settings, so many options available to you that it can take a while to get up to speed on everything that you can do inside Emacs. And today I wanted to cover some of the basics regarding fonts and line settings and fringes inside Doom Emacs because some of these settings are pretty obvious but some of them are not obvious and it took me a while to figure out how to do some of the stuff that I'm going to show you today. So let me pull up my Doom Emacs config. So let me launch Doom Emacs and do space FR for search recent files and if I search for my config.org here and let me zoom in here and do me max if you do control and the plus symbol it should zoom in for you and my config file is starting to get rather large especially since it's a literate config and I'm leaving myself notes and other people that come behind me that want to try my config you know I'm leaving a lot of notes here so it's actually not terribly long my config but you know I've got a lot of extra stuff in it let me get back to the top of this what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this document because we won't need to see most of this but I'm gonna go down here to fonts and since it's an org document if I do a, a single tab on fonts here it will unfold the font setting and one of the things that I've kind of struggled with until here recently is just getting my fonts right because there are really five settings that you need to know about within Doom Emacs three of them are rather obvious because they are in the default config two of them are not very obvious because they're not in the default config but I think a lot of people probably do want to set these so the first three that we need to talk about and these are just notes here because these are not inside the source block of this Emacs Lisp source block here so these are just comments and I left these as a note for me and others is the Doom font setting what this does is it sets the standard monospace font that is used for most things in Emacs because most things need to be edited in plain text and of course you need to use a monospace font for that so make sure you set doom font which I did here set Q doom font to whatever monospace font you prefer I set mine to sauce code pro nerd font mono now not everything inside Emacs has to be a monospace font or needs to be a monospace font for example if I look at the EWW web browser inside Emacs you know I'm viewing a web page inside Emacs I don't want the font inside the web browser to necessarily be monospaced I mean if it is that's okay but it would be fine as a variable font so the next setting you want to set is doom dash variable dash pitch dash font and that's a, the variable font that is used with some Emacs plugins such as your web browser and I set that to be font family Ubuntu size 15 and lastly the other doom font setting that's there by default in your config well not exactly with my fonts but you will have doom font doom variable pitch font and you will also have doom big font in the default config the doom big font is just a quick way of making a really large font you you, you toggle your font to a really large font for presentations that's typically what it would be and I have this set well let me do it meta X so alt X and if I do a search for big font you can see the command for it is actually doom dash big dash font dash mode I set a key binding for it for space TB actually I didn't set that key binding that's one of the default doom max key binding space TB for space toggle big mode so let me do space TB and there you go that's big font mode it's really big font mode especially since I'm zoomed in but let me zoom back out or let me just toggle that back off so a space TB again makes big font mode uh, it disables it it makes it go away and I'm back to the normal font size I was using now the next part of my font config these next five or six lines here were a little confusing to me at first because I really wasn't sure what was going on with bold fonts and italicized fonts inside Doom Emacs because especially in org documents you can make font bold or italicized or emphasized if I do an italic font here on the word related all I need to do is just wrap that in slashes and it should turn to italicized font which it does but in the default Doom Emacs config it does turn it italicized but it also shows you the uh, the slashes 
And I couldn't understand why it made it italics, but also still showed the slashes. Why didn't the slashes just go away? I, I didn't like that. And the same thing with the bold font. So if instead of, you know, related and being uh, italicized here, we did it in bold, which means wrap it in uh, asterisks. So do related and then end it with an asterisk. It turns bold, but it left those asterisks there by default. And again, I didn't like that. It didn't make any sense. Just make the text bold. I don't need to see the asterisks before and after the word. So to get that normal kind of effect, what you need to do is make sure that you have uh, enabled both bold and italicized font so you guys see that after the Doom theme loads, so when I first launch Doom Emacs, after Doom loads its custom themes, then I want you to set Doom themes enable bold, and I want you to toggle that on, Doom themes enabled italic, toggle that on. So if, you, if it's not toggled on, then there's no bold text or no italic text. So that's how you turn bold and italics off if you don't want them. The other thing, because in org mode, I was seeing the slashes and the asterisks, and I didn't want to see those. I also needed to go to my org settings. So if I go down here to org mode here, and let me go ahead and unfold that, there is a line in here somewhere right here org dash high dash emphasis dash markers, and then I toggled that on. So what that does is hides the emphasis markers. So that's the asterisk before and after a bold word or the slash before and after an italicized words. It, and it now hides that stuff. This is not here out of the box in Doom Emacs. And I, it probably should be because I think most people probably would want that effect. I can't imagine too many people want to see those uh, extra characters. It just seems unnecessary to me to have that displayed. And the last two settings I want to talk about are these two here that is custom dash set dash faces and the commands here font dash lock dash comment dash face. What that is, is that is settings for comments in your document and then font dash lock dash keyword dash face. That is settings for special keywords. So if you're working in a programming language, for example, in C, maybe, you know, for and if those particular statements are have, have some kind of special significance. So to make them stand out, they will be italicized and the same thing in, in other languages, I, I think in Haskell. You know, uh, certain things uh, like the import command, I think, is italicized and, you know, things like that. A matter of fact, let me just go ahead and launch another instance of Doom Emacs and I will search for my Xmonad config. So let me go to the top here and you see import. I guess that particular word has special significance in the Haskell programming language. So it is now italicized. That is not the case out of the box. If you don't add these lines yourself, you will not have uh, comments italicized and you will not have those special significant keywords and whatever programming language you're working in italicized. So I added these lines and you guys probably want to do that as well. I also noticed that by adding the comment face uh, italicized command here, when I do a meta X, these are comments as well. Right. It's not just comments in the document you're working in, but also when you do your meta X and it lists out commands and then at the side, it has the description. These are technically comments. This now becomes italicized. The same thing with the key bindings. So if you have something set to a key binding, the key binding is italicized all because of this command here. One last thing I want to tell you about fonts, especially when you're dealing with italicized fonts, not every font has an italic face. So one of the problems I had initially with Sauce Code Pro, I love the font and I know it has an italicized face, but it has an italicized face if I use Sauce Code Pro Nerd Font Mono because there's also a Sauce Code Pro Nerd Font Mono italics. But originally, for some reason, I was just using Sauce Code Pro Nerd Font. I didn't specify mono and Italics did not work with that font set that way, but when I added Sauce Code Pro Nerd Font Mono, you know, now when I try to use italics, italics actually works because Sauce Code Pro Nerd Font Mono has an italics face. So if you are using a font and you're not seeing italics, make sure that font actually has an italicized face. And if it does and you're still not seeing it, then you probably didn't actually list the font correctly in the setting. Now, the next thing that I'm going to show you guys, and this is one that kind of confused me because I wasn't sure what was going on here. Let me zoom back out here because I want you guys to see this here. 
And let me go ahead and unfold the entire document here, go to the top. So we have this coloring going on. You see the bar on the side that's green in this one spot and blue here, and then there's no coloring here. And I guess it's there to give some kind of visual representation of what's kind of going on, you know, what's a code block or what's a comment or what's just an empty line or what's uh, been folded, things like that. This line is called the fringe. And there are actually two fringes available. There's one on the right side and one on the left side. And by default, it is turned on in Doom Emacs. And, you know, it's kind of, it looks good, right? I mean, it's kind of interesting. But at the same time, it's kind of pointless most of the time. Like, do I really need that line there? I, I could take it or leave it. I don't care. But I know some people may want to have the ability to turn that off. So if you just do a meta X and search for fringe mode and hit enter, it's going to ask you what kind of fringe mode do you want? Do you want the default, which is left and right fringes? Or do you want no fringes, right only, left only, half width? And that's just a smaller bar. So the bar, the bar that it's currently using is only about four pixels wide. But if I do half width, then, you know, it becomes like a two pixel wide bar. So it's really small. And then it's a, a minimal fringe mode. I'm not exactly sure what makes it minimal. But if I do no fringes, you know, the fringes go away. And it's a, it's a cleaner look. You know, this is typically what I would probably use myself. And I know it's not obvious exactly what the heck is going on in that sidebar. If you've never heard the term fringe, that's what it is in Emacs. It's called the fringe. So just do a meta X fringe dash mode and then select whatever fringe you want to use or just choose no fringes if you want it to go away. Now, let me go ahead and do a shift and a tab and fold this document back up. The next thing I want to talk about is some line settings, uh, some uh, some other stuff that I wasn't sure about. So. One of the things with Emacs is the lines are truncated by default, at least in Doom Emacs, that's the case. I, it may be the case in just standard GNU Emacs as well. And that's what most people probably want. It makes sense as a default, but sometimes I don't want the lines to be truncated. If a line is, you know, a thousand characters long, I just want it to be on one line sometimes. So I set this toggling command here, toggle dash truncate dash lines. You can imagine what that does. It toggles on truncate lines. So let me find something that'll make this obvious. Okay. So I have this description right here about centaur tab. So there's a, a tabbing functionality available in Doom Emacs. I'm not going to talk about that on this video. I may talk about it on a future video, but that is one line there, right? It's a very lengthy line. But if I do my key binding that I set space TT, you know, I toggled off truncated lines. <laughs> if I want to turn on truncated lines again, space TT, and now lines are truncated again. And of course, that was visually, you were able to see when I truncated the lines on and off, especially since I have the line numbers on the side. I think most people are going to want line numbers, but sometimes you don't really need the line numbers, or sometimes when you're working, especially if you're doing creative writing, you would like line numbers and a lot of stuff to go away, actually, but sometimes you want to turn off the line numbers for some of the stuff you're doing. Well, in Doom Emacs, uh, I believe the command is Doom slash toggle dash line dash numbers. And they already have a key binding to toggle line numbers on and off. This was already available in Doom Emacs out of the box, space TL. So if I escape and do space TL, it toggles off the line numbers. If I do space TL again, it toggles line numbers back on. And that is really Doom Emacs specific, that uh, that command there, <laughs> the space TL key binding and uh, Doom slash toggle dash line dash numbers. I believe in standard Emacs, the package, the, the program that actually handles line numbers is called Linum, L-I-N-U-M, I guess Linum. So if I actually do a search for line num <laughs> yeah there's a line num dash mode i mean i could turn it on to see what happens but it's a separate package and what happens is we get two sets of line numbers one handled by the doom emacs way of doing line numbers and then one handled by line num so let me turn line num back off but i just wanted to demonstrate that for those of you that are using uh, vanilla gnu emacs or maybe some other distribution of emacs other than doom emacs and lastly, I just wanted to show you guys one more setting that I found really useful because 
Uh, imagine you do a vertical split here. So if I do space WV in Doom Emacs, and you know, I've got the same document open, which is great. Maybe I'm writing a book. Maybe on one side, I want this uh, org document that I'm writing my book in. Maybe I want it folded so I can see all the chapter headings, you know, see my outline. But in this side, I want it unfolded. So if I do a shift tab to unfold this document, well, let me get it unfolded. Both of them unfold. You know, and that's not the desired effect I want, right? I want to be able to work on this document separately than this, or at least view it separately. Now, if I change something and write, you know, that makes sense. But I don't want every time I fold uh, a section, you know, for it to be folded in this page as well. So how do you accomplish that? Well, how you accomplish that is there is a command, and I had to look this up because this was something I, that really bugged me, and I dug through the Emacs documentation to find this. Clone-indirect-buffer-other-window. That's a very lengthy <laughs> setting. But I added this key binding myself, and I set that to space BC. So if I go to one of these splits here, and I do space BC, now these are not tied to each other. So now I could go back over here and if I fold this one, you see this one now stays unfolded. So I don't know if that's something that everybody's going to want to do, but I know especially if you're going to do any kind of creative writing using Emacs, you're going to want the ability to have the same document in a split and two two different splits, but you know, you're going to want to be able to fold one and not the other. So just a little bit about some of the basic settings available to you within Doom Emacs. Now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of the show. I'm talking about Michael, Gabe, Corbinian, Mitchell, Devin, Fran, Arch5530, Akami, Chuck, Claudio, Donnie, Dylan, George, Gregory, Kell of Devils, Lewis, Paul, Scott, and Willie. They're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode about configuring Doom Emacs wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because this channel is sponsored by you guys, the community. Without you guys, I couldn't do this. If you'd like to support my work, look for DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.